Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. In talks on Wednesday with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, Pope Francis says the use and possession of nuclear weapons is inconceivable. According to the Holy See Press Office Director Matteo Bruni, during their conversation that lasted about 25 minutes, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and the Pope talked about the nuclear weapons and about how they, their use and possession is inconceivable. Long-standing opposition to nuclear arms. It is not the first time that Pope Francis has expressed this view. Marking the 75th anniversary of the nuclear attack on Hiroshima, he sent a message to the organizers of the anniversary commemoration, recalling that he had prayed at the Hiroshima Peace Memorial during his 2019 visit to Japan and met with survivors. It has never been clearer that for peace to flourish, all people need to lay down the weapons of war, and especially the most powerful and destructive of weapons, nuclear arms, that can cripple and destroy whole cities, whole countries, he said. During his 2019 visit to Japan, Pope Francis described the possession or deployment of atomic weapons as immoral. He has also repeatedly called for their abolition and expressed his support for the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. We shall continue the Pope's reflection and uh, message next Sunday. Prayer for the Synod We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Salome Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Fancy May D. Imbong, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Linaw Trucking Services, Mr. and Mrs. Protasio and Fe Takandong and Family, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Shardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Williams Food House, Silvina Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Deason, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Casas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, 
to satisfy your offended justice and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group. Engineer Ernesto and Erlinda Aguilar and family, Bonifacio and Lilia Mabilin and family. Thanksgiving intentions, Nida Tumalip Anonymous, Magdalena Kukam, Carlos Tan and family, Salvador family, Rosalie Caballero, Rosel Caballero, Engineer Jonaline Beluria, Senen Carbonell, Mercy Evangelista, Ernesto and Erlinda Aguilar, Lita Montalban, Nelio and Evelyn de la Peña, Lilia and Bonifacio Mabilin, Ronel Mabilin, Vivian Cam, Captain Ireneo and Betty Malano. Where the intentions? Bing Unkinko, May 18, Nesha Villamor, May 23, Zenaida Salvo, May 24. Special intentions, 50th and wedding 50th wedding anniversary of Ernesto and Lina Aguilar. <laughs> 50th wedding anniversary of Ernesto and Linda Aguilar, May 6. Riza Villanueva to pass her exam. Recovery and healing of Ryan P. Aguilar, Emil Season, Regina Cispedes, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Rudy Torrejos, Merlin Brasha, Sol de Velos, Raimondo Apostol. For the eternal repose of Lucas, Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, Germin, Erlinda, Claudio, Marutas, Julio, Menandro Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto Sr., Jessica, Manuel, Renerio Sr., Conrada, Adelaida, Leoncio, Damaso, Floro, Linda, Christine, and all who died of COVID-19, victims of war in Ukraine, all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Prayer for the sick, Lord and Father, God, without end and almighty, through your grace you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people, deliver them from their sicknesses, and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to be a shepherd of God's people demands purity of intention and heart. It requires total dedication to the point of being ready to lay down one's life for the good of the sheep following in the footsteps of Jesus the Good Shepherd. We have the duty to promote and sustain new vocations to priestly and religious life. We must pray that God's flock may never lack holy representatives of the Eternal Shepherd. Today is also Mother's Day. With all our hearts, we pray for all the mothers throughout the world but especially for our own and all Filipino mothers. The presider of this Mass is Father Greg Damondamon, OSB, St. Benedict's Monastery, Kogun, Digos City. The choir during this Mass is the Harmonic Choir, San Pedro Cathedral Parish Choir, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus the Blessed Redeemer. Sing to earth His wonderful love proclaim. In 
the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, as we are celebrating the fourth Sunday of Easter, it is a celebration that is quite special because there are three things that we are also celebrating within this fourth Sunday of Easter. First, this Sunday is also Mother's Day. And so we are also offering this Eucharistic celebration today for all the mothers. Then secondly, it is also a world day of prayer for vocation. And so in this Eucharist, we are also offering this to the Lord that he would send us more priests and religious who would work in his vineyard. Then finally, we are celebrating today the Good Shepherd Sunday. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we are celebrating this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our own sins and ask God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock will reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Today's episode is of fundamental importance in the history of evangelization. Since it marks the decision to start preaching the gospel to the pagans, the church is meant for all nations and races. The first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pidicia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshippers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshippers and the leading men of the city. They stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks to be to God. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We 
from the book of Revelation describes a heavenly liturgy participated in by innumerable people from all nations and races. They are the elect who remained faithful to Christ in the persecution. The second reading. A reading from the book of Revelation. I John had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of a great distress. They have washed the robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship Him day and night in His temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. My brothers and sisters, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. At the heart of a good shepherd, that is what it means to be truly be a good shepherd, shepherd to his flock, is 
love in itself and faithfulness to this very love. That means it is the quality of the Good Shepherd that he should understand, accepts, forgives, and loves his flock. And what I realize and I discover is that to be a loving father or mother or parents or leader will never be a spoiler for the children. This has always been my experience and my realization. In fact, the opposite of that when a person or a child did not receive enough love from his parents, for example, it would always be an issue for him. And as the saying goes, one cannot give that which you do not have. In other words, if you have not experienced what it means to be truly accepted, understood, and loved as you are, if you have not experienced what it means to be truly forgiven and embraced by the person who is significant to you, then you are not able also to learn how to give this love to others. So being a loving parent, a loving leader will never be a spoiler, but rather it will always be the strength and the foundation of a person's growth and development. And it will also be the very foundation and strength by which this person would also grow in the spirit of charity towards others. That means this person would also grow with that sense of compassion and mercy to the poor, the destitute, and to those who are weak and broken in our society. And so therefore, what I realize, for example, when at times I am able to handle uh, counseling or assisting some problems and difficulties of, for example, religious or priests, it would always go down to their experience of losing that sense of being love or lost love experience in their growing stage. When a priest or religious did not have enough love from their parents, for example, then it would always come back to him or to her as an issue that would make his religious life or priestly vocation so difficult because he would always search, look, and also cling to these lost love experiences in his life. And so therefore, to be a loving parent, to be a loving leader, is never a spoiler. In fact, this has always been the strength and the foundation of our growth and development as a human person, as well as our very foundation and strength by which we are able also to offer our sense of charity for those who need our help. And secondly, it is also that sense of faithfulness. Faithfulness to that very love, faithfulness to that very commitment. In the context of the family, for example, I have heard so many times children, young men, and young women, adult, and even old people would always cling to his anger and frustration in life because once in his life or in her life, he experienced his father, for example, of becoming unfaithful to his mother, for example. If, for example, the father will have his own, in our own language, kabit or another woman or another third party in the family that would always remain an anger and frustration for the children and they would always carry them even when they have already grown old if this issue would not be resolved. And in the same way, that is also the brokenness 
and the scandal of the church in our time today, when the priests and religious and the leaders of the church are already becoming unfaithful to our vocations, when we are not anymore faithful to our vocations, this would create a scandal to the people, and then we would lose our sense of credibility to the flock, to the people by which we are serving. And so it is very important and essential that we always remain faithful to our commitment, to our vocation, whether priests, religious, or married life, because this would become a, the very strength and foundation by which we would also grow, mature as a person, and then eventually we will also grow in numbers in matters of our vocations for priests and religious, as we are celebrating today the let us say the day, the year, or the month, prayer for vocation. I remember that once there was a research being made by the University of Alabama under the social studies program. In that research, they have interviewed a lot of people in different nationalities, as well as the different walks of life. And in that research, their conclusion was this. Money can't buy happiness. Because it was the intention of that research to really discover what is it that gives that sense of peace and joy to a person, no matter what is his profession, whether he is rich or poor, whatever his religion may be. That was the intention of this research, to really discover the bottom line, the commonalities, the common denominator by which a person has this strong foundation, by which he has that sense of peace and joy in his life. And in that research, they concluded that money can't buy happiness. Ang kwarta dili makapalit o kalipay. And then... The in that research, they discovered that there is one common denominator by which a person finds his foundation of peace and joy and true happiness in life. No matter what would be your race, your religion, your culture, your tradition, your status in life, they discovered that the heart of all of this, being human, there is one common denominator. And that one common denominator that they have discovered as the source of happiness for every person is that sense of love and faithfulness in the family. That was the discovery. Love and the very faithfulness in that very love within our family. They discovered that the person if the person grows in the family where there is love and faithfulness in that love, this person is truly happy, this person is truly peaceful, this person is truly joyful. And eventually, this person is also a person of charity, a person of compassion and mercy. Whenever this person experiences what it means to be loved, understood, and accepted within the family, as well as that sense of faithfulness within the family. So, mao na siya ang panginahanglan na shepherd usab sa ato ang panahon karon. A shepherd who is loving, who knows how to care, to accept, to understand, to forgive his flock. Of course, a kind of, in as much as there is that sense of administering the grace of Christ within the church, for example, there is also a need for an intelligent shepherd, an intelligent loving, as well as faithfulness to our vocation. No matter what would happen to us, we stand on the ground of our relationship with Christ, persevering in times of trials and difficulties. So, mona siya ang atu ang panginahanglan karun na shepherd, na parents, na leader sa ato ang panahon karon so that we will truly grow mature as a Christian.
Let us now proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered by Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended to the dead, and the third day was saved. He ascended to heaven, and he seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus, our divine shepherd, calls general souls to be the visible instruments of his love for his flock. Let us commend to the Lord Jesus, all those who represent him among us and those called to fulfill his role. Let us say, Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. For the Universal Church, may all her members appreciate the work done by their pastors and support them with all their resources. Let us pray. Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. For the Holy Father, the bishops, and priests, may they be, for all the faithful, the clearest signs of God's patience, concern, and love. Let us pray. Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. For all parents, teachers, and civil authorities, may they be faithful to their mission, to promote the good of the persons entrusted to them. Let us pray. Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. For all mothers throughout the world, and especially our own, may they be preserved from all evil and enjoy the reward for all the good they have done to their children. Let us pray. Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. For the young people, whom God calls to serve the church as priest or religious, may they respond generously and persevere in their vocation. Let us pray. Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. For tomorrow's national and local elections, may the voters be protected from the harassment, and may all election officers have the courage to resist intimidation and fraud. Let us pray. Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. For all those who have fallen asleep in death, trusting in God's mercy, we pray, especially for the victims of the war in Ukraine and COVID-19, the disease members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's media mission. Let us pray. Jesus, good shepherd, hear us. Jesus, eternal shepherd, keep guiding all those you call to the religious life and to positions of leadership in the church, that their examples of authentic Christian life lead us closer to you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice is acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal concentrate at work within us be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope. Romulo, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people whom you have redeemed. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and we hid him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by His divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we are always freed from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Lord Jesus Christ, you have said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer to each other our sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. 
Happy are we who are called in his banquet. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things, because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed. By the precious blood of your Son, lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. To married couples for the Amoris Laetitia family year. This pamphlet is a letter to spouses for the celebration of the family year this year. Available at the Poland's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, Philippines at 55 pesos per copy. The Lord be with you. Amen. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go in the love and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.